We're gonna use the almighty six jaw to uh, do this job right here. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and stick it in here. We're gonna start with the end faces, okay? We're gonna go ahead and put a hole through here as well. Instead of turning the OD down, trying to finish all this, I really don't have enough material to be able to hold this and be able to do all the machining I wanna do. Uh, because this is going to try to give a little bit and squeeze. I think it's going to try to rip it out of the chuck if I'm trying to do too much to it. So I'm going to use the mandrel method for this. We'll put a hole down through here. I've got some expanding mandrels and we'll stick this on one of those once we get a nice clean bore through there. We'll do the faces, the bore, and then set it up on expanding mandrel and finish the OD. So that's my uh, plan of attack. This is the mandrel that I'm talking about. I had to just dig it out from underneath dad's toolbox there. So you have this piece which expands and you have the, uh, the tapered mandrel there right here. This thing has old, been around, been around a long time, but it's still in good shape. It ended up having a lot of like rust on it at one point. So I took it and just polished it really nice. But all you do is you stick that on there, put your workpiece on and you press it and it expands, tighten it up on the bore of your workpiece so you can hold it to turn you know, the OD of work pieces. So that, I just wanted to show that for those that might not be aware, this is what we're gonna use. That nylon or any kind of plastic like that, high speed tools is uh, your friend on jobs like this. So I've got one of my classic turning tools there. I went ahead and re-honed the corner, the side, you know, your cutting side right there and honed the top. You want a razor sharp edge on it. Not, not the point, just the cutting edge itself and then a uh, honed radius on there. So that's not a big radius, but we're gonna see if this works. I was looking for a different tool with a larger radius. That's one that I've had up here that I've used a lot. So we're just gonna try it. This little uh, step in the face right there, I'm actually gonna face that off so that we can get all the way out here to our full diameter. Let's just see if we can see how it does. One cut right here, set a zero. Oh, that's doing beautifully. It's dropping right down in there. That is exactly what you want it to do right there. Perfect. Some good, good cutting stuff right there. Face is just silky smooth. So that worked out good. I'm gonna use my one and seven eighths diameter uh, taper sink drill to put our hole through there and then we're gonna bore it to two inches. But I do need to touch this up and we're gonna do that, <clears throat> but I don't have the, the best chisel point angle on these drills whenever I hand grind them like that. So that's why I like to always start with a pilot drill to relieve at least the diameter of your chisel point. So that's exactly what we're gonna do on this. I'm just going to go with a half inch drill that has a really good grind on it. We'll relieve the center of it with that. It won't take long because this, this drills really fast. Then go in there with the one and seven eight. So we'll do this and then we'll go put a uh, fresh edge on the taper sink drill and then set that in there and uh, hopefully have a successful one and save seven eighths diameter hole down through there. Just gonna drill aggressively, push it through there quickly. Don't let it dwell. All right, I gotta back out and uh, run this up in there because I already run out of uh, quill length. Crank it in there quick. Pull it out so you're not creating the excessive heat. See, it's getting hot quick. And then go back in there with it again. Okay, you see it's already smoking down on the end. That, um, that plastic, because of that rotating friction, gets hot really fast. So actually I've got a longer drill that I'm gonna put in there just to finish this out. Got this long drill here. Same thing, half inch. That went all the way through. Yeah. 
All right, let's go uh, touch up our taper sink drill. All right, we're over here at the Queen City. And this isn't bad, but I do want to touch it up because I've used it. You can see the discoloration there from cutting steel. I just want to freshen that edge up. Nice sharp edge there, and we'll hone that to get rid of some of that roughness on the edge of it. And uh, I gotta find my gauge. My gauge is not here. I must have picked it up and used it somewhere else. There we go. That's the gauge I like using. This is really about the only drill gauge I use whenever I'm uh, hand hand grinding these drill bits, and use that angle that's built into this thing. You just lay it, lay it on the edge, and line it up. And then I'm comparing to the other side to see if it's the same angle. And I can tell I need to do a little bit of grinding on this because the angle is actually off a little bit. For what we're doing, it would it, it's going to be just fine. But let me see if I can go ahead and make that angle right. Because this one's off a little bit more. Yep. Trying to do it evenly on both sides, using my sight to guide me. Keep a water tray there to cool it down. I'm going to do the same thing. Just come in here and check the angle. That one right there is just spot on. That one's still off a little bit. That side looks pretty good. Take a little bit more off. A little bit better. Still got a little bit more on this side on the angle. That one's looking good now. This one's still pretty good. Now I want to use the, uh, I know that reflection. You see the, uh, the graduated lines on there? Now I'm using that to measure the center distance of the chisel point angle. So it's about 32 and a half. And then this side, when you flip it over, see we're at, we're almost at 36. So I know material's gotta come off of this one right here to bring the center, bring it back to center some. So this is what I'll do. I'll just keep repeating this process that I showed you until we get this uh, drill bit ground the way we need to. It's almost there. The camera doesn't know what to think about that. It is uh, shaking and vibrating around and I can see it's trying to move some. Here's our freshly uh, ground taper sink drill. So I'm going to take this uh, round honing 
stick right here and I just want to I just want to remove the edge is going to have these sharp burrs on there I just want to kind of remove that right there doesn't take much just like that and then if you want to get real fancy with it then you can take your uh, your hones come in here these are just diamond homes and so you come in here on that edge right there and uh, hone it down even finer than what the uh, grinding wheels got it at it doesn't need this I just thought I would show this to you in case you want to try it yourself got a nice sharp cutting edge on it right there. Let's go see if this thing will drill some plastic. So I have a problem right off the bat and, I, and this is what I what you always deal with whenever you're hand grinding. So I don't have enough clearance behind the cutting edge there. So I've got to go touch this up again. You can see it's just pushing on it. It's because the heel is rubbing and not the cutting edge. Let me see if you can see it. Can't really tell, but it's going to be out here in this general area of the uh, flutes. Right there, I can see a little bit of nylon right there in that area. So I need to go relieve this. I won't worry about the cutting edge. I'm gonna leave that alone. We're just gonna relieve the heel a little bit on each side of the flute. All right, we just touched up the heel a little bit, just from that right about there on around on both sides of the flute there, just to try to relieve it a little bit. Let's see if that does the trick. get this thing bored out so I'm using an inch and a quarter of Loris boring bar I've got another high-speed tool bit here that I have uh, ground and honed and I'm gonna go ahead and let's get a uh, measurement on the hole here should be around one and seven eighths which it is so we'll just make a couple passes that doesn't have to be an accurate hole size we just want it nice and true and we won't bring it out to two inches so let's uh, let's do it Should have enough clearance for those chips to uh, not bind up. <laughs> that was the, uh, <laughs> you see that right there? I had uh, forgot that I didn't go quite all the way through with that drill bit. And uh, so it was pushing on that very end right there, but we got her, we've got her done. 
and get these off out of the way. Bore is nice and smooth. Get a measurement on there and see where we're at. So it looks like 950, right about 950. I'm just going to dial 50 thousandths in, and that's going to be it right there. Let's get a chamfer cut. We'll go ahead and uh, break this outer edge too, just to kind of remove the sharpness of it. All right, so that side's done. Yeah, it feels good. Now we're just going to flip it around. We'll flip it around and face the other side, and then we will go to our expanding mandrel. The finish looks so good. I love the way this stuff machines. It always leaves a nice finish on there. So we'll just give that side a nice face. It doesn't, you know, it's not really necessary, but let's just do it hopefully it'll drop down again sometimes right when that thing clears that little thin chip will actually catch the rotating the, the workpiece and then it'll pull everything back up so on plastic i'm usually waiting right for the end to uh, shut everything off so it doesn't pull the chip back up into the workpiece there so that looks pretty good let's uh go ahead and put a chamfer on that side as well go all right so now we are ready for the expanding mandrel okay let's get our workpiece on the expanding mandrel that's how that works right there so this one is uh, two inch in diameter in a uh, relaxed state just like this so since we made it the same size let see I want it to go that direction there you can just kind of push it in there And then uh, make sure this is clean. Just slide it in there like that until it stops. All right, and then what I, what I like to do is just bump it on a piece of wood here. And this is not gonna take, there's not gonna be a lot of machining forces against this trying to break its bond on that ID. So we'll just give it one good bump here on the wood just like that and this should be nice and solid you got a nice clean board through there so there's no burrs hanging up and this is going to work really well so just use a center you can hold it with a chuck or run it between centers whatever you'd like but uh, so just chuck it and run it in the center and then do your turning just as easy as that flat's pretty wide so I got to make sure all them jaws are touching on the round portion of that mandrel ready to turn we'll be using my high speed turning tool I went ahead and touched up this side on the grinder again because I could tell that edge there had a little bit of wear from the use and then honed the radius real well and then honed the top of it so we have that razor sharp cutting edge right there with a nice smooth radius to uh, make a nice finish on this uh, nylon is what I believe this is just getting a few measurements on this uh, pipe that we bored so that I can see exactly where it landed on. It's nice and cool now. So that right there is uh, seven under. Five, six, seven, seven under. And when I say seven under, it's so close to the three inch nominal size 
that that's what I'm looking at is three inch minus what it what it's actually measuring. So three inches minus seven thousandths. So 2.993. That one is uh, seven and a half thousandths under it. This uh, this kind of pipe. Uh, the problem with it and using it for machine parts, it doesn't act the same way as DOM tubing or even solid for that matter. It likes to move around on you. And it is pipe. Uh, remember, so you can see the seam right there. This was called special pipe. And I don't, I don't know um, what, what all was different about it versus standard pipe. I do know it was a little heavier on the wall and it did not have that seam on the inside. So it's finished without the seam on the inside of it. And uh, it, was a, it was a material that we used for a company here in town that we used to make these um, pieces of threaded pipe for. We had these uh, collars. So we had to set up and thread one in. We had these round collars that we had to machine to fit them. And, uh, and that's all that it was used for. Uh, I just don't remember what it was used for in industry, but we did them by the thousands, honestly. So I'm getting seven under. So this one's measuring uh, two inches, 993 thousandths. So I will give the nylon uh, a good two thousandths of press fit down in there. And then once we press it in there again, we'll come back to this setup and uh, bore it out clean. I'm gonna give myself a uh, half inch shoulder up here. Nothing too critical here. We're just gonna hook it, line up the tool with the half inch mark there. That square up the rule like you should. So back it up some, there we go. So that'll leave us a half inch there, more than what I need, but I think that'll, that'll make it look good there too. Set a zero. All right, and we are ready to turn. So we have about 600 thousandths to remove off the OD here. Let's, uh, let's just take a 200 thou cut on this and see what it looks like. If I can get the uh, chips to cooperate with me, that's, that's all I'm concerned about. And you can certainly take a whole lot more than that, but uh, try to give you guys a couple shots of this anyway. All right, I'm gonna stop it. What I wanna do is try to push that off. Start it again and see if it will go down in there. Nope, wants to curl. Let me try one other thing here. I'm gonna kick the feed rate up some on this and see if it'll curl over a little bit faster than that. Now I'm still wanting to curl around the tool, but that'll work right there. And that'll, uh, that'll get the job done a little faster. Now one thing to keep in mind, you're turning this kind of stuff here, just in between each cut, just make sure you push all the chips down in the pan or remove them from the chip pan, throw them in a trash can, just so that if it tries to wrap up on you, it doesn't pull everything up out of the chip pan. That's doing good. Give it a mic and see where we're at. Should be about a hundred thousandths to come off of it right there. You see on them lighter cuts, that stuff wants to just uh, wrap and, and uh, string up on you. This is our finished cut. Let me, uh... all right, that did better right there. As long as you can keep it down like that, going down into the chip pan. Cleaning that face up with a little extra five dowel cut. See how it wraps up there? At the end, that's what you have to really watch out for, especially if you're taking a heavy cut. This is nothing but just gotta be mindful of that. That's usually why at the end, 
I, I'm ready to uh, hit the brake and shut the machine off very quickly and instead of it trying to wrap all that stuff up. So let me uh, do a quick check here and see if we hit our mark. I was going for uh, two to three thousandths interference, which is what we got. So we got three thousandths interference fit on that. But while we're here, I, I just want to clean this up to make it look good. That's all we're going to do, just clean it up. That's it. See, so yeah, I trying to pull it up. All right, so I'll swap that out. We'll put a uh, chamfering tool in there, chamfer our corners, and uh, this guy's going to be ready to uh, press in. I turned the tool. This one, we're going to give it a slight little bevel to help line up in that, uh, that pipe easier. That's it. All right, now we'll go press this off. We're gonna set up in the Dake Arbor press here. Got my uh, daisy plates here that fits the shaft. Now, a lot of times, see there's very little stick out, but when you've got a piece on there and you got plenty of arbor, usually all you gotta do is just flip it over on that block of wood and bump it and it'll loosen up. But in this case, we're going to have to do a little pushing with the press here, so it shouldn't take much. Just like that right there. You just got to make sure you hold on to the arbor so you don't go crashing down to the bottom. There we go. Get our pipe out of the lathe. We're going to go across the wall there to the dake press. Just leave the chuck where it's at, those two, that way we'll stick it right back in there and true it up again. Go down one more level. Won't quite reach that one. Go down to this next one here. All right, I think we're ready to press this guy in here. Should not be. <clears throat> At least I got it started. Now we can just run our screw down. For anybody curious about what this this press is, this is a Dake 50H, so 50 ton. Although it will not do 50 ton anymore, the cylinder needs to be completely rebuilt, new seals. And uh, it, H, I guess, for hand press, manual press. Usually these plastic bushings like this press in pretty easy because they have a lot of give to them. But the three thousandths I give it is more than adequate for what it is and what it's going to be used for. all she's got oh, I messed up I forgot whenever you run that screw down to the bottom it jams up and you have to take the collar back off so I'll have to do that later all right there it is
All right, we'll get this uh, trued back up quickly and get, get this bore finished out. Remember our little stick out trick that I had talked about earlier? So we're just gonna verify it again. So the uh, bushing is five and three quarters inches long. And this is six and three eighths from this to the tool bit. So that leaves us five eighths. So I just wanna set a stop so I don't have to cut any longer in there than I need to. We'll just come up to this, use the scale. All right, there's half inch, so that should clear the back of the bushing by one eighth. I'm gonna set my zero here with the dial indicator, and then that'll be our that'll be our stop. Or that's when we clear the bushing anyway. All right, so we got a half inch to bore out of there. I got it set at two hundred thousandths. See how it does. You know, I need to speed that up a little bit. Since we're on our rough and cut, let's get through there faster. That's about a 15 thou. Yeah, 15 thou feed rate. Line it up in there pretty good. Should be through here in just a sec. This is going to be the first of one of our finishing cuts. This is a 60 thou cut, slowed the feed rate down. I want to see uh, what the chips are going to do on this, if the, if the bore is going to stay clear and uh, not cause any kind of little uh, bumps in there from the chips binding up. So this is a good sign right here. The chips look like they're just going to work their way out. So I'll just continue to uh, monitor that as it's cutting and just use my scale here to kind of help it fall down in there like that and if it continues like that we should have a good clean straight bore through there All right, so we're at 445. So 55 thousandths to bring it to two and a half, plus our clearance. I haven't really determined how much clearance I want to give it. I'm thinking maybe five, six thousandths, somewhere in that range right there. So, so we still got about 50 thousandths to come out of it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and split that into two equal cuts right there. Since we got 50, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 25 and um, and then we'll check it again and then we'll take our final cut there. Uh, not that this wouldn't handle, I'm sure it'd do good at that, but I wanna just make sure that we uh, don't mess up on our chips galling up inside the nylon. Give the uh, steady rest another touch of whey oil. Really 
want that guy to fall down. That's what I was afraid of right there. That's what I didn't want to happen. There we go. on the wrong side of the tool bit so it doesn't want to come out. I think that worked out pretty well. The chips are small enough that they're not binding up in there like it did on those rough cuts. So let's make our final cut. All right, this is going to be our uh, finish pass. Got it dialed in right where we need it. And uh, it should give it five thousandths clearance. You're going to come out of there. Doesn't look like it wants to come out. Uh, it looks like it's pushing forward in front of the bar. All right, that's through. We'll retract the tool, push it away so we don't drag. And it left the chips up inside there. Bore feels nice. Grab my mic. Tell you what we'll do before we even mic it. Just take our shaft. Looks like it's got the clearance that I put in it. There it be. I just mic'd it, so we got our 5,000th clearance. I hit it right on my target. So that is gonna be your friction point right here. But uh, we're gonna test it out and see if my theory is gonna be right or wrong as to whether or not this is gonna be too hard to spin once you get a load on this thing. Um, you know, of course, you can oil it, grease it. Might just use some kind of spray lubricant temporarily anytime we go to use it to kind of help lube that up. I even had someone suggest use uh, a little bit of Dawn disc soap on it whenever we go to use it. So that's probably not, not a bad idea either, but it should have good rotational feel. All this is nice and true. My only, my only worry so far is whenever I go to weld it, you know, that was my biggest concern is to whether it's going to try to draw this, but I'm hoping that since we're going to be welding a little bit further down this way, that it's not going to warp this side here, but it still could. It still might draw it some. And if that's the case, if this ends up being too tight to where I can't get it in there, then we can just go back to the lathe and just skin a couple of thousandths off of this here in order just to get it to uh, fit in there. If, if we, if that happens, if we come down to that. All right. So we still need to put a bevel on this, a little chamfer, so we'll do that, and then this part will be done. Give that a nice lead angle there for that shaft to fit in. All right, this, uh, this looks good right here. Uh, I know it's not necessary, but I wanna go ahead and turn this around and face and chamfer the other end of the pipe, just so that it's all 
it's all got a machine finish. So I'll flip this around, get it set up back on the steady rest here and uh, show you the facing off that we do on that other end. We got the uh, steady rest set using the bell center. I did not undercut it, so it's just running on the, the uh, raw OD of the pipe. Just wanting to clean the end up. That's all it needs, just clean the end up. Well, our lathe portion of this part of the project is done. Let me go ahead and remove it from the lathe. So uh, next step that I wanna do is go ahead and take the, uh, the crossbar, the cross beam, and I wanna set up the milling machine with a three and a half inch cutter and actually cope the end of the tube so that we've got a really good fit on this piece of pipe right there. Uh, so that's the next phase right there. I'm gonna start getting the uh, milling machine set up for that. Mm -hmm. 